It's back to Anderson. Anderson crosses it. On the foot of Boucher, the shot goes home! The equalizer from Riley Boucher! Ty match in Lexington! Defensive line. Bissinger, a strong pass up ahead to Granger, who gets turned away, but Berman with nobody home gets the second goal of the night for the Generals. It's time for the military classic of the South Soccer Edition. And as we turn the calendar to another month, we turn the page to a new chapter in this historic rivalry. It's the Citadel and VMI coming up next here on ESPN+. Plus. Good to be with you, everybody, alongside Jeremy Franklin. Jack Hunter with you. And, Jeremy, the Citadel had VMI's number last year, defeating them twice, but there's reason to believe that that will not be the case again this year. Here alongside Andrew Arnold, I'm Jack Hunter. As we get prepared for the matchup, that's going to decide who gets the one seed going into the ODAC tournament. This has been such a tight series history, especially recently. Lynchburg, Washington, and Lee, the last 13 matchups, 12 of them decided by one goal or less. We should expect something pretty similar tonight, Andrew. Yeah, you see as we get set for what should be an exciting matchup, Sean, Suni Oneata and Catholic, two teams that are no strangers to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Lynchburg, 37 goals this year. It's a little above 2.3 per game. Washington and Lee, the exact same total. Yeah, to the thousandth, I noted, Jack, 2.313. So pretty much as even as it gets right there. Washington and Lee scoring 70 goals in 2021, 68 in 2022. The offense has struggled a little bit more this year. WNL still finds themselves in good positioning here on the 25th of October. As Doolin goes down, but McCarty now tracks it down in the midfield. Plays it long for Adler. Adler saved by Viscuso. Viscuso strong there on the near post. Adler found a little space down that left line. Notably, McCarty able to turn there. Had a lot of time and space. That's not what you want to do with Grant McCarty. This team knows McCarty very well, and Cannot give him time, especially right in front of that back line. Very creative player, able to slip passes through well, and then has a pretty capable and strong shot, as we've seen before, too. For these seniors on both sides, if they've played in every matchup that Washington and Lee and Lynchburg have played starting in that spring COVID season, this will be the fifth time that these true seniors will have played each other. For some of the Lynchburg fifth-year guys, this is number eight. These teams played three times in 2019. Miller leading Shalita. Lynchburg gaining some momentum up the field. Here's Luke Mega. And Mega so hard to dispossess off the ball. The key to defending him is you have to keep him in front of you. Aiden Cass. Lose it. But Lynchburg not trying to build more out of the back. Seeing a lot of possession from Lynchburg early. Very quick passing, able to knock it around pretty well. Kind of different from different Lynchburg teams we've seen in the past. Sometimes trying to play a little more direct, a little more long ball as WNL gets it in transition. And Tukey trying to play Agbegbe forward. He's got him. Agbegbe streaking through. Shoots. Goal! How about that start? Wayme Agbegbe strikes against the Hornets again, and it's 1-0. Let's take another look. And you can't really wait a pass better than Tukey does here. Plays it right down the line. Takes the center backs completely out of the play. Wayme Agbe, Agbe. A touch of class and a touch of finish. For a guy who's had some struggles this year, that's how you get it started against your rival. Wayme Agbe, Agbe, the Hornet killer. Now his third goal in four career games against Lynchburg. And this one coming at a big time in this contest. Just over five minutes gone in this game. That big first five minutes for WNL. They get the early goal. And I talked about initially, maybe the moment's a little big for the Generals. Maybe coming into this game, coming 2 1 1 in the last four, haven't been in the best run of form. Maybe it's going to be a little hesitant from the Generals. And boy, was I wrong. Agbe Agbe rises to the occasion. We talked about him in the pregame as the goal scoring threat for the Generals, and he comes up big early. Pass made by Tukey, though. Don't want to overlook that. Just a brilliantly weighted ball straight up the line. I mean, it looks like a pretty easy pass just from the viewer when you see it just going straight down the field. But to keep it weighted, to take the defenders out of play but not allow the goalkeeper to come out and have a chance to clean up the ball early, just masterful from Asa Tukey. A careless Lynchburg turnover gives the ball back to Washington and Lee, but a good challenge by Enrique Morales 
will get it back for Lynchburg. That's Tukey's third assist of the year. Agbagbe's eighth goal of the year. And now this game is wide open. Already starting to see the physicality. Not a love, lot of love lost between these two teams as looks like Spencer Furman on the ground. I think he took a shot there in a place you don't really want one. Spencer Furman has been the starting center back for Washington and Lee since October 1st when Mike Singleton put him in that starting lineup and put Asa Tukey, who's standing right next to his teammate right now, on the right flank. Furman still laying down. And Furman's been a big part of this Washington and Lee back line. It's obviously very difficult for a center back as a, as a first year to make a big impact. But he's able to get up now. And it looks like he just needed some time to, to let things play out. Yep, let things play out. Seems like a good way to tell it, Jack. And like I said, this game's opening up. I would expect... A good number of fouls in this game. Already seeing the physicality opening up here. Well, the last two matchups, 29 fouls apiece. And if you remember the 2021 conference matchup in October for Washington and Lee, P.J. Ryan ended up getting two yellow cards, in a, and then that turned into a red card, obviously. And the Generals played for the last about 35 minutes shorthanded mm -hmm. and still held on to a win. But Mike Singleton said over the weekend after their loss to Christopher Newport, they, the Generals lost 2-1 to one over the weekend, that he felt his team was just very unnecessarily nervous for a game that wasn't even you know, top five, top six biggest games in a lot of the players' careers. But definitely not coming out nervous tonight. Ag Beg Bay trying to chip it forward. He ends up getting through to Asa Tukey past Dale. Tukey rockets it to the middle. Ag Beg Bay in the peach-colored cleats trying to track it. Shalita trying to turn and go for the Hornets, but back to DePaula. And you can see immediately from the Generals, as soon as they get the ball, trying to attack at pace, just pinging the ball as fast as they can. It's clear, coming into this game, the scouting report was get out in transition, move the ball quickly. That's how you saw that first goal happen with Tukey playing through the Agbe Agbe. The Generals trying to play very quickly tonight and doing it very effectively so far as well. Both of these teams playing very fast, very physical, pressing high up the field. We're set for a really fun matchup tonight between the Hornets and the Generals. One seed on the line as we head into the conference tournament this weekend. Both these teams will host the first round on Saturday in the quarterfinals, but when you get to the championship game, that one or the two seed may mean a lot. And as we've mentioned, playing on the road versus Lynchburg and here at Watfield, very different. Not only the surface is different, but just the success that these two teams have on their home pitch. As Morales and Ag Begbe tracking it down, and right. it'll go to WNL. You kind of just get a look there at Agba Agba's open field speed. I think that's something that's underrated about him as a player, especially as he's transitioned from playing winger his freshman year to that number nine center forward role. He plays a, a lot of back to goal, a lot of first touch, a lot of layoffs, but if you can get him out in space like Tukey did earlier, that's when he could be a very dangerous attacking threat. Agba Agba, first team all ODAC last year. He was the ODAC rookie of the year in his first season, starting his 60th career game tonight. That goal was his 29th career ball he's put in the back of the net. Long throw from Ryan. And Lynchburg exits for now. DePaula. Nifty play to Adler streaking through. He goes down and foul called. Looks like that one just outside the box. A little hard to see from our view over there, but... Very firmly gets tripped up, and that's going to earn a yellow card there for the Lynchburg Hornet. Taking a look at another play here. He just comes down that left side, takes that big touch, and is ready to turn the corner. Has a lot of pace there and just gets tripped up. And I think because of the area, and it looked like where the play was going, that one, a yellow card from the center referee. So McCarty just barely outside of the 18 now on that far side of the field. A lot of options for the Generals here. On this set piece, eight minutes and 58 seconds into this contest. McCarty going to provide that in-swinging curling ball. Looks like he's going to try to find the head of maybe Ryan or Agbe Agbe or Furman towards that back post. P.J. Ryan notably an aerial threat. That's how he's gotten some of his goals this year. He has a quick word with Furman there on the back post. Both center backs up for the Generals. Willie Hall remaining near midfield to play cover. The senior McCarty. Too much mustard on it. And now Lynchburg will escape a dangerous situation. Yeah, and definitely tough ball to play there. You can tell he's trying to put a lot of pace on it, but to keep that ball low with that pace, very difficult and just ends up getting under that one a little bit. And like you said, 
Hornets escaping a dangerous situation as the Generals turn on some pressure. Lynchburg trying to possess through the back and push forward Ryan with some good contact on Luke Mega, not allowing him to turn. Lynchburg's going to have to slow things down here with the throw. I talked about earlier the difficulty in defending Mega, especially if he can turn the ball, basically sticks to his foot it almost looks like. So definitely a very hard player to dispossess. That means you have to keep him from turning and you have to keep him in front of you. Mega recently made history for Lynchburg. His goal over the weekend versus Guilford gave him career goal number 53, which now puts him which now puts him in sole possession of third place all time in the ODAC in goals, passing Sam Chase, WNL class of 99, and recent inductee in the Washington Lee Hall of Fame. As Dueling the ball hits off of him, and now Lynchburg with a throw. Looks like Lynchburg setting up for a long throw of their own. We saw Ryan hang one up towards the six yard box on the Generals' offensive end. Now the Generals preparing to defend here, kind of just treating it as a corner kick opportunity. Hornets packing some guys in the box. The throw comes from Velasquez out the end line. And Lynchburg corner coming up. It'll be Shalita again to knock it in the box. And notably on that free kick on the general side, Lynchburg brought their whole team back, but now keeping two defenders there for Agbe Agbe. In the middle, Joseph bats it. Averitt keeps track of it. Shalita now chips it to the back post. Headed on by Whelan, but he can't get good contact on it. Yeah, not the cleanest first contact there from Will Joe, but defense able to clean up on the backside. Not always excited if you're a coach if you see the opposing team get the first head to it, but wasn't incredibly competitive, so generals hold on. We've talked about Washington and Lee's defensive prowess a little bit. We more, we've more focused on Lynchburg, but Will Joseph allowing just about under a goal a game in his second year starting for the Generals, a sophomore from Wilmette, Illinois. Coach, it hasn't been easy this season. It, it wasn't easy this weekend, but you advanced to the Sweet 16. How are you feeling right now? Feeling great. The guys just gutted it out, put in every ounce of effort they had and really deserved a victory today, and I'm so proud of them especially like with all the injuries we have right now. I can't even tell you how important it has been for other people to step up and really show that the depth of the team is a really important thing for us. You were up one to nothing at the halftime break, but they were knocking on the door. How, how were you able to, to keep them off and, and, and get this win in the second half? Well, it's our counterattack is very dangerous, and we had a lot of opportunities to score. And in my mind, I was like, well, we're going to score more than them. <laughs> so, so our defense really stood up and won a lot of – well, a lot of tackles and head balls in the back, and we took away their dangerous weapons of their outside midfielders, which was our goal coming into the game, is to take 10, 30 out of the game, and we did that. Third straight year in the Sweet 16. You've done it now over the past three years with a very different cast over, over the years. How are you guys able to be so consistent over the years, even with new guys coming in, stepping in this year into bigger roles? I think it really goes into the character of the players. Like When new guys come into here, the older guys are taking them under their wings right away and telling them, what they need to do to be able to be as successful as we've been in the past. And I think the, the elder players on the team really manage that very well. You've got a date with the Tufts Jumbos coming up in the Sweet 16. What's going to be the message to the guys this week as you get set for the Sweet 16? Just be ourselves. Do what we do. Fight the way we fight, and good things will happen to us. All right, appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Jack. And head coach Mike Singleton.